Today we're going to design the easiest to build off-grid solar power system that can actually charge up an electric vehicle. And it might seem difficult, but it is easy to do if you pick the right equipment. There is equipment available today that you can hook up in under an hour and you can actually charge a Tesla or charge any other electric vehicle on the market. First off, this is my off-grid solar power system that I use to charge my Tesla. It outputs 240 volts and a max continuous wattage of 13,000 watts. And it works great and was pretty easy to build. But you'll notice there are lots of cables and you have to size everything correctly. So what we're gonna do instead is design a system with equipment that's easier to set up than this. It does not require communication and all these extra conductors, but you can still charge any electric vehicle at 240 volts. So what you need instead is an all-in-one system that has a 240 volt output. And I've been running this for a few years this is actually my battery capacity test station for 48 volt server rack batteries and it is very easy to use you only need one unit for your entire system it does not output 13,000 watts like that one um, this one only does 5,000 watts but the new MPP solar 6048 which is pretty much identical to this with how it looks can output 6,000 watts so get this all you need to do to build this system is get some $10 Hardy board from Home Depot, slap it on the wall, and then you put this bracket into the studs, and then you just hang the inverter on the top and then you secure it on the bottom. Then connect some battery cables to your 48 volt battery bank. And then you connect your solar panel array right here at these terminals. So you have two separate solar charge controllers and each one can handle 4,000 watts of solar panels each. And two 4,000 watt arrays can produce a lot of power, plenty of power to run a Tesla or any other electric vehicle. Now this is where it gets really easy. The AC output terminals right here, there are four terminals on this model. It has a ground, a neutral, a hot one, and a hot two, which means you can buy an extension cord for either NEMA 650 or NEMA 1450, and you can wire it up directly to these terminals. How cool is that? So you just plug your Tesla charger in to this. It takes literally minutes to set up. Now something to keep in mind is the output capacity of this inverter. So you will not be able to level two charge at max charge rate. Typically most Teslas and other electric vehicles charge from 32 amps upwards of 48 amps at 240 volts AC. But with this inverter, you can only charge at 25 amps Amps. So you have to actually change the charge rate in your electric vehicle down to 25. Also, when you attach this cable, you need to secure this cable so it doesn't get yanked out. So the hardest part in building this system is mounting the solar panels and running those high voltage lines inside to your unit. Besides that, everything is so simple. You don't even need a sub panel box. You just connect a cable straight to your charger. And then you're set. If you had like a stack of server rack batteries below this inverter and then you had this inverter to charge your Tesla that's fantastic something else to consider is if you need a home backup for small loads or anything under 6,000 watts you could easily use this with a transfer switch installed by electrician to code and then you could just run a cable straight over to your transfer switch and then treat this as a generator and to make that legal you have to use the grounding conductor when you connect to the transfer switch that's very very important. Also, if you're using lithium batteries, you should use a T-class fuse on the main positive conductor for this system. And for this one, I'm using two watt gauge cable. This cable can handle the current when this is at max output capacity. But think about for a second, the max input capacity is larger than the inverter's max output. So you should actually size these conductors to whatever solar panel array you have connected. So 8,000 watts divided by 48 is 100 and 66 amps. So whatever conductor you use needs to be able to safely handle this in like 25% more for headroom. Now one downside of the system is the max input voltage is 148 volts. So that means you might need to use a combiner box so you can put multiple arrays into parallel or multiple strings into parallel. But they actually have another model called the LVX 6048 and it does have a higher voltage input. 
I always forget what it is, hold on. It's 450 volts. I thought it was 400 volts. So yeah, that one, you could have like a single series string for that 4,000 watts, which means building the whole system would take a few hours. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But it really depends on what solar array you plan to use and what voltage you need to run. Because copper is so expensive, I would go for the LVX because that copper, those wire runs from your array could be quite expensive. So I would go with the LVX any day over over this model. But this model is fantastic too. Depending on how you wire up your array, this might be more appropriate for you. And that's pretty much it. Just connect a cable, your Tesla charger, some batteries, and some solar panels, and you're good to go. And there's no communication to run this system for 240 volts, unlike many others. But if you want, you can put these into parallel and build a massive system. So if you want to scale it up in the future, you can do so as well. Three of these together can easily power a home, but be sure to use the T-Class fuse, make sure you use hardy board, and then hire a professional if you're going to touch the grid at all. This is an off-grid inverter and it's UL certified, and hooking up a couple batteries to an inverter doesn't require much. But if you feel uncomfortable with wiring anything up, you should always hire a professional. Or better yet, you could get the Tesla 50 amp charger, connect it directly to this, have a professional do it with conduit, and then reduce the charge rate to 25 amps and then it would be professional it would look so nice that would be so cool and that's pretty much it for this video if you have a better idea and you think that my idea is bad please let me know in the comment section below i would love to find something that's easier to set up than this anyways thanks so much for watching and i will talk to you guys in the next video bye